Good morning, my church family and friends. We come to worship God today and celebrate his goodness in all of our lives. And we just thank God. We thank God for you and we thank God for Lord Douglas who is here recording this service for us and continue to pray that God will bring us back safely at the church and the near future. We just thank God. Let us pause for a moment of silence. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson today is from Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two, they covered their faces, and with two, they covered their feet, and with two, they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called and the house filled with smoke. And I said, I, and I said, woe is me. I am lost for I am a man of unclean lips and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with, with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and whom will go for us? And I said, here am I, send me. Our epistle lesson today is from Romans 8, 12 through 17. So then, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it isn't an obligation to ourselves to live our lives on the basis of selfishness. If you live on the basis of selfishness, you are going to die. But if you put to death the actions of the body with the spirit, you will live. All who are led by God's spirit are God's sons and daughters. You didn't receive a spirit of slavery to lead you back again into fear, but you re received a spirit that shows you are adopted as his children. With this spirit, we cry, Abba, Father. The same spirit agrees with our spirit that we are God's children. But if we are children, we are also heirs. We are God's heirs and fellow heirs with Christ, if we really suffer with him so that we can also be glorified with him. And our gospel lesson is John chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a Jewish leader. He came to Jesus at night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could do the, these miraculous signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered, I assure you, unless someone is born anew, it's not possible to see God's kingdom. Nicodemus asked, how is it possible for an adult to be born? It's impossible to enter the mother's womb for a second time and be born, isn't it? Jesus answered, I assure you, unless someone is born of water and the spirit, it's not possible to enter God's kingdom. Whatever is born of flesh is flesh and whatever is born of the Spirit is spirit. Don't be surprised that I said to you, you must be born anew. God's Spirit blows wherever it wishes. You hear its sound, but you don't know where it comes from or where it is going. It's the same with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said, how are these things possible? Jesus answered, you are a teacher of Israel and you don't know these things? I assure you that we speak about what we know and testify about what we have seen, but you don't receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you don't believe, how will you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has gone up to heaven except the one who came down from heaven, the human one. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so must the human one be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him won't perish but will have eternal life. God didn't send his son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now let's pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to thee. This is uh, an opportunity that I don't get much to do a teaching. Um, I decided that we'll do that today, uh, looking at the scripture uh, uh, from Acts. We just thank God uh, that we can do that today. Uh, we're in the process preparing for a charge conference, and it's good to refresh things in our mind uh, as we come continue to celebrate. Uh, the time that they replace someone, uh, they cast lots. Um, they, they, they did that to pick the person, um, but we don't, we don't do that. We in the United Methodist Church, we are a church, it used to be uh, the nominations committee, which is no longer called that, but is the lay leadership committee where we pick officers, select officers, uh, to serve in the various roles in the church. So I'm using this time to kind of refresh us with that process as we're nearing to get back to church and also nearing our charge conference in the fall. We just thank God uh, that we can do that. Uh, when I thought about Acts, during this time, the family of the believers was a company of about 120 persons. And Peter stood among them and said, Brothers and sisters, the scripture that the Holy Spirit announced beforehand through David had to be fulfilled. And this was the scripture concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. This happened even though he was one of us and received a share of this ministry. Therefore, they had a job. We must select one of those persons who have accomplished us during the whole time and know about the ministry, know what we're all about. We gotta select one. And the way they selected one, they cast lot. And the lot, in this case, fell upon uh, Judas, Barabbas, 
And at the same time, it's a different way. And other churches uh, nominate persons differently, whether you're Baptist, Episcopalian, or uh, United Methodist do it one way. And, but I, I like the way the United Methodist Church does it because it gives people a, a foot in it, give everyone a chance to be a part of leadership in the church. With small churches, it doesn't, uh, we're, we're overworked anyway, but it doesn't matter. But in larger churches, uh, for classes, you got uh, A, B, C, uh, one, two, three class, uh, you serve for so many years, like uh, pastor parish relations committee, you serve, uh, that's a powerful position. Administrative council is a powerful position. And trustee are a powerful position in the church. And so you have classes each year. Uh, for instance, 2012, 2013, 2014 would be uh, a class, and they could serve throughout um, the 14. But we just thank God that we can do that. It's in the book of discipline. It's there, uh, stated how we should do it and, and how that goes. So we thank God that we're not the, the, uh, the lot of the, uh, the uh, shooting crap. Uh, system. We don't do people that way. We don't sh roll dice in order to pick someone or, or put a name in the hat and pick someone. We have seen organizations that use names, slip the name, and that put it in uh, a hat. Our charge conference is normally in the fall of the year, and, and uh, we're in the process, we'll be in the process eventually of selecting offices. Uh, we have been doing it for years, some of us, and, and it's new to some, but at the same time, this process will take place. And as a pastor, I cannot pick and say that this person would be this person, uh, but they are picked by a committee. We have a lay leadership committee uh, that names, we sit down and talk about the names, and we ask person to serve, and, and at the same time, if they say yes, They'll tag for a whole year or three years, maybe four. But at the same time, uh, we have a lay leadership committee. Uh, I think uh, it, it's done well. Uh, it's not done by choosing your favorite people all the time. It's a wide based process. We just thank God for that. Um, also, we notice that there are classes, whether it's, it's uh, 2012, 2013, uh, 2014, for trustees, for pastor parish relation, or nurture committee, or either um, uh, lay leadership committee. They are in classes. But at the same time, this may not mean much to you, but at the same time, this is how we use to select officers. And then uh, once you, uh, Select a name. We have to check with the people to make sure they're willing to serve. And sometimes yes, sometimes no. And maybe we have to recruit. But the thing, I, other thing I like about this here process is that, uh, for instance, if you choose a committee and some, for some reason a person cannot continue to serve or they move away or something happens, uh, the committee will come back together and choose a person to fill that position. So we just thank God that we have a system in place uh, that we can choose off of. It may not be the best, but at the same time, prayerfully, uh, we pray that the leaders for the church. And then uh, in the beginning of the year, if they're chosen in the fall, uh, we have um, beginning of the year, we have them installed at offices uh, for the church. And there are certain positions in churches that we don't have to vote on, they're not in the disciplinary in terms of uh, ushers and other uh, people in the group, choirs and everything else. But at the same time, we do that within house, but at the same time, we do follow the disciplinary requirement of officer, choosing officer for the church. So now, as we prepare for Charles Conference, I believe in being fair, asking all persons to uh, be involved with leadership of the church. Uh, and I thank God. And when I do get to a church the first time, I look at the past charge conferences 
and I look to see who are served, who have not served, and I look for potential leaders throughout the year. Uh, I don't try to force people to take a position, but if you're good, you're good. Uh, I try to get someone to match, match gifts and graces, match them up. So Jesus chose his disciples. He went directly to the workforce. He did not go into the unemployment line. He went there, the fishermen. He called the fishermen one by one, come and follow me and I will make you fishers of men. But he wanted to employ them to be kingdom builders here on earth. Uh, he went to the tax brother, tax collectors, and, and employed them. He employed people. He went to where they were to employ them. That's another way of uh, selecting people. So now, we are called to become fishers of men. We are called to make disciples for Jesus Christ, and we invite people uh, to be a part of this fellowship. And I think our problem sometimes is that we don't do enough inviting. People think that you automatically are a member because you attend the church. Uh, case in point, at one of my churches in Winchester, um, and I was looking at the charge conference information like I normally do, and this man was faithfully serving on the committee. And I asked him one day, I said, you know, I'm glad to have you serving the committee. I said, but did you ever join the committee? No, I just started working. And, uh, and so I said, it's good to have you. And sometimes people need to know uh, what committee they're on and, and, and everything else. We, we welcome anyone for anything, but at the same time, you know, he said, I didn't know that. And so you, it's a matter of teaching people about their responsibility and, um, and don't assume that a person is a member of the church or a member of a committee uh, by assuming, just ask and you get what you need. So in this case, it was good to have uh, that conversation with him. He was very appreciative. He learned something, and we all learned something as well. Uh, persons have been there, and at the same time, I tried to pay a, a good uh, attention uh, to detail. The last thing I'm going to say is that uh, when I got here at Cranford in 2005, I know there were some persons uh, who had not served on any committee in years. Me being the type of person I am, I said, you know, um, and I got more than what I bargained for. Um, I asked uh, one person, she's, she's no longer with us now, and I said, no, when a certain minister was here, I decided I wasn't going to do anything else in the church. Boom. So then you got to work with people, uh, try to find something that they would be happy with and doing, and and uh, this person was great that we got to write letters to the, nurse, the members who have not been to church, write sympathy card, get well card, uh, missing you card, and she did a fabulous job, uh, and she loved it. Now, what am I saying? There's something for everyone, for everybody to do in the church uh, because uh, Jean Lulu came, she and her husband, Edgar, and she did a great job up until she couldn't do it no longer uh, of sending out cards. And so thank God for the leaders that we got now, Barbara McDonald and others who send out cards and everything else. But uh, Jean took that job position and did well, organized it. She knew who sent cards, when it sent cards, to when they were sent, uh, we just thank God. And people got gifts. And uh, people are just waiting to be asked to do something. You'll be surprised to know uh, what people can do. The gifts there are among us are great. And so everyone can do something in God's house. Everyone may not be a singer. Everyone may not be an usher. Everyone may not be a secretary. But just be faithful to God, and God will bless you to be who he calls you to do. So I want to emphasize leadership today, and at the same time, as we prepare for our charge conference, uh, this is the time we do that. Uh, teaching moment, as I call it. Uh, we'll be getting more, doing more as the year goes on, and, and we just thank God for this scripture and Acts. 
uh, because it teaches us that, uh, and then when persons are chosen, we don't just choose them, we pray for them. We encourage them along the way. Uh, we have training sessions, try to have training sessions uh, for each committee. But more than you, uh, most of you have been a member of the church longer than I have, uh, 40, 50 years, but you know more than I do, but at the same time, we all can learn from each other. So now, the question I leave you to think about, uh, what can we do to help transfer United Methodist Church to become the church that Jesus Christ is looking for in the last and evil days. Give God your heart. Give God your best. Give whatever you can give to God, and God will take and multiply that gift. We thank God for Laura Douglas, who filled in during this time, the pandemic, over a year and a half, to record our services and uh, worship services and committee work and stuff like that. We thank God for the gift that she has and shares and brings with us. So we all can do something. So we think about that as we approach the fall. Uh, we normally have our charge conference September, October. Uh, if you have not done anything in the church in the past or want to do something, please see me or one of the committee members, and, uh, and we will help, be glad to have you to do that. Let's close in a word of prayer. God, this is your church. We want to continue, God, to give you our best, give you our all and all. We sometimes, God, have doubts, we have fears, but Lord, we know that with you, all things are possible. Continue, God, to bless Cranford United Methodist Church, bless the membership, bless the community we're part of, and let your light continue to shine through our lives. And God, we give your name the praise.